Hey everyone, it's Grey Ghost Gamers coming back at you with episode 4 of our extreme playthrough to get Deke as overpowered as possible, as soon as possible. Now, what we did in the last episode was we managed to get Deke outfitted with some pretty interesting weapons. We've got the MG45 and the US556. So we can see we got the US556 right there, the MG45. He still has a crappy sidearm pistol, but we've got other fish to fry. This episode is, uh, we've also got a Ripper Axe, but we're going to be heading to a whole other region right now to get that weapon upgraded as much as possible. So let's take a look at where we're at. And, uh, oh yeah, as you can see, I <laughs> can't move the cursor south from Copeland's camp. We're not supposed to be here, but I'll just uh, get back at it and show you that if we just look immediately down, there's a valley that we'll be using to traverse the mountains and get into the Crater Lake region. And we're going to do that by leaving this area right there, because that's where we're at. We're at the Redwood RV Park that's normally populated by rippers, but at this point of the game, it's an ambush camp that normally would be something we could take out, but we've got nobody there. And that's okay. Now, I'm pointing out the MG45 because in the last episode, we had to go through a little bit of hell to get it. But what we're going to do is I'm going to show an alternate way to get the same weapon as we line ourselves up to our exit point and cross over the mountain pass there. We're going to be going through that. And while we're on our way, we're going to beef up the stamina to its maximum ability, which won't be a problem because there are at least four injectors along the way to get the weapon that I was just mentioning, the MG45. And lastly, to continue our march to getting the skills required to be able to get the carry that weight skill. This essentially doubles the inventory that Deke can carry in his magical knapsack. <laughs> Which is going to be a great advantage to even start the main story once we get back to Copeland's. Of course, we got to Copeland's and just bugged out and left Boozer to his fate. Uh, because he's waiting for Deke to go get him some bandages, but he'll be fine. He's up at O'Leary's safe house and just chilling, probably going insane with the fever or whatnot, but that's all right. He'll be good. Okay. <laughs> all right. Let's, uh, let's get back at it and get into the Crater Lake region. All right. So here we go. Gonna get Deke up these rocks so that we can get up and over. Sometimes we can get it up this section. Oh yes, nice. And then we just go over this little other section here. No need to go crazy on the acceleration. And then start making our way up and over the mountain. As you can see, it's pretty much a straight shot. Don't really have to deviate too much to get to the top here. But I want to stress that while we're going for the maximum weapon, maximum melee weapon, the MG45 was a struggle for me. And if you had as much trouble getting it off the rippers that I did, I'm going to tell you right now, that we're going to go to a location where all you have to do is show up, fire one shot, and you can walk up and get the gun, the MG45. So, is that worth something to you? Pretty crazy, right? But it's true. I'm going to show you. We're going to get there, and you'll be amazed, and you'll wonder, well, then why do we bother with the Rippers? Well, we needed to bother with them just to open up the Nero camp, so that'll help later. Now as we go down this hill, 
we're going to have the same issue with the ground glitching out and possibly dropping us into oblivion. But we can avoid that as we approach this differently textured snow by just clipping the edge of it. So right there, right there was all we needed to do to get the ground to solidify under our feet. And now we're good to go. We're going to face the same issue that we did coming into the Lost Lake area. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, not too far off in the distance, if the snow just wouldn't uh, be so intense. I'm just going to save it here. Uh, you've got Diamond Lake on the right, and you've got Wizard Island up there near the top left. And we've got just a couple of more obstacles to deal with. Now, you're going to want to break hard if you can, because you do not want to go flying off into the sunset on this one. But just like the same situation in Lost Lake, we have invisible, invisible ledges to traverse and get into the region. Actually, I just want to make sure. <laughs> Little magic trick. Uh, how's he doing? Okay, it looks like his health is all good. We don't have to worry about it. Not going to worry too much about the bike, but we are going to just try and get it good enough so that we can slide down the mountain, but... <laughs> I tried to use the cliff. Obviously, that didn't work. <laughs> now, you could do... You know what? You could do it this way. This is also another way you could do it. So if you get uh, frustrated like me sometimes and you don't want to worry about uh, <laughs> safety, that's why it's like you're, you're not gonna you're not gonna survive that if if, what I can do. <laughs> if Deke is not a hundred percent. Oh my goodness. Okay. Now we're headed off to a mine so that we can pick up the next injector. And once we get there, and because it's daytime, we fortunately do not have to worry too much about Freakers attacking us at this point. So that's where we're gonna go in a moment. But first, I want to upgrade the melee weapon I have on my back. Now it's giving me that warning because the Mount Bailey Horde is active in this region and that's their feeding ground at night but this is what i'm stopping by this camp for and it's that wonderful weapon and as you can see down there in the left corner left side bottom corner the stats on this thing are absolutely maxed out this is the best melee weapon you have in the game and just to give you the wonderful detail of that monumental cliff that we fell off way up there and where this campsite is located and there are a couple of things so you get that you get the melee weapon and we're going for our injector and you do that you accomplish that by just heading up this way now again if i need to say spoilers well you know what i mean a narrow beacon that's right, Deke. And not only that, but we're going to be coming across another type of Freaker that uh, you're not only really not even going to get to see until a certain mission in the game, when you're in Ripper territory and you have to do something there. Uh, but here, before I show you, we're just going to... Uh, you can see him corner there, but that's okay. Stamina, baby. Stamina all the way. Is that what this shit is? 
and there's our guy. Now, oddly enough, during a normal gameplay, you'll already have met him. And unless you come and visit this specific location to get that nearer recording, you won't hear the backstory of the Breaker. Jesus, that's a big guy. Yes. Yes, it is. Field note 2072. We're at Site 69. The... Where are we? The Lost Cabin Mine. Thank you. The Lost Cabin Mine. We have euthanized a specimen of Homo sapiens mutans corporosis using 10,000 milligrams of ketamine. Reference of field note 2071, where 6,000 milligrams was barely enough to subdue the Homo sapiens mutans albino. We tracked this subject from its primary habitat and structures on the northern rim of Crater Lake, what used to be the visitor's center, I believe, to this mine. Currently, we have no working theory as to the subject's migratory habits, living patterns, or... How about why it's so goddamn big? Got any theories about that? Yeah, as a matter of fact, we do. Really? Yeah. Blood tests have shown that Homo sapiens mutans corporosis have extremely elevated amounts of anabolic steroids. Wait, so what? Before they became infected, they were roided out? Basically, yeah. Not that they were all bodybuilders or athletes taking illegal synthetic androgens. Some probably had naturally high levels. The result's the same. Yeah? What's that? They can literally tear you in half. Come on. Let's get these samples crated up and get out of here. Oh, roided out freaks. That's just great. And there's the whole description of a breaker. And everything we just did right now, that's the location of it, just in front of that mine in those houses. Now, the next injector is literally near the entrance of the cave for the, the horde, the Mount Bailey horde. And I'm gonna go get it. Cause I want Deke juiced. And it's not that far from where we were, because most of it isn't. So you can tell right there, that trail of <laughs> blood and crap and guts and whatnot. Now we don't have survival vision, but listening carefully, you can tell that the horde is there. Okay, where is it? But here's our next injector. An injector? Nero had all the good shit. Ooh. So very quickly, oh, we've got Deke just about set with maximum okay. stamina. Hey, Lieutenant, we're getting awfully close to them, aren't we? They're moving away, Corporal. It's 1800 hours. Dinner time. They won't be back until morning. They're magnificent, aren't they? Sure, if you say so. Field note 1833. We are at designated site 217, Dog Prairie Cave. Picking up sample collectors leading to and from the cave entrance. Just follow the trail of shit, yeah? It's way more complicated than that. Early indications show that Dr. Anderson's theory regarding trail pheromones is correct. Homo sapiens mutans turba, or horde as the locals prefer. Because of all the hexacrine glands that produce a semi viscous secretion transporting as yet unknown pheromones. I gotta say, Doc, you sound pretty excited. You don't get it. You know how ants, termites, bees, wasps, they all know where their nests are, how to find trails that lead to food. Sure, how do they do it? You see little road signs everywhere? No, of course not. They do it through pheromones, Corporal. The same chemical processes that tell them not to tear each other apart. So they shit everywhere and follow the smell. Why do I bother? Come on, let's get these back to the lab. <laughs> and there's that explanation. Now we're off to the last injector that's going to max out our stamina. 
which is just along the ridge line here. We're just going to follow the camp. We're going to follow, like, the smoke in the distance is the, oh, ambush camp. Wolfie, wolfie. At least we can get away from the wolves, so we don't have to worry about them. I'm just going to see, are they... Are they following me? How, how close are they following me? Okay, not too bad. All right. I'm sure they'll come back, rear their ugly head pretty soon. But just about this part is where we're very close to another injector. So really quickly, we're getting to the injectors and going to max his uh, stamina out pretty damn quick. Oh yeah, now oh, there it is. Good God. Yeah, we can see all the <laughs> victims. An injector. Nero had all the good shit. Is that what this shit is? Yes, it is, Deke. And that's it. Maximum stamina. Oops, I really didn't want to have to do that. Now, sorry, folks, I started the explanation for this uh, lava cave wolf stuff, but what's more important is the ambush camp that we're riding up on, so I'm going to talk over the explanation. You can listen to it on somebody else's stream. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, oh, sniper, yep, get out of the way. <laughs> uh, best laid plans. But anyway, this is really the interesting part because this ambush camp is is kind of silly in a way. Like, I don't even know why or how these people set up their camp here because there's one very interesting aspect about this camp that I really don't think they fully appreciate uh, the, the ramifications of their decision to actually set up here because... At that tunnel, there's a horde, not a big one, it's a small horde, but as I mentioned with the one shot, that's all you need. So if you're looking for the MG45 in probably the easiest way imaginable to achieve it, you can just shoot that crate, it'll get the horde's attention. and start taking out the camp for you. You don't even have to lift a finger. And as we'll see, right there, that's our heavy that's carrying the MG45. Now, all you gotta do is just keep an eye on where he's ending up. Oh yeah, that, that horde is taking care of him. Bye-bye. Done. That, that didn't take long at all. That's it. You're done. How do you like that, huh? Being ambushed, you like that? You're murdering sons of bitches. <laughs> Way to go, Deke. Bunker, yeah, I bet they had a bunker. Just gotta find it. As they say in survival territory, use what you got. All right. So there you go, folks. Tired of uh, dealing with uh, rippers at... Uh, at the other Nero checkpoint, you can just come down here, take your one shot at that crate, and take them all out, and then just walk down there and uh, grab it. Now there's two options in dealing with this horde. You can decide to go after them and take them out. I mean, you have pretty good weapons on your back. The MG45 you already have, plus the other gun, the US 556, more than enough to take them out. Or you can skirt around the outside of the front of the camp 
and there's a hole in the fence that you can get through and sneak into the bunker that way. I'm just coming back to the bike to give a quick save. So yeah, head down that little valley and then just go to the front of the camp and avoid them completely. But uh, you know what? Even though I have the guns, I think I'm going to go in a little ninja on this one. I've got some uh, extra things in my pack that I can use. And another important reason is that ammo for these weapons is pretty scarce. In fact, it's pretty much non-existent unless you get to a cop car and tin out in the open world. So the more you can conserve your ammo un until we get the uh, ability to purchase a weapon and keep it, is probably a better strategy at this point. Yeah, that grenade should take him out. Not too many left. Pretty devastating. <laughs> yeah, throw them all atop just for good measure. And there we go. <laughs> so, not only has the camp been taken care of, but we've also taken care of the horde. That actually worked out a hell of a lot better than I anticipated. God damn it. Fuse blown. Yeah, we've got a blown fuse, so we're going to have to take care of that because the sky is starting to change. But we just head over here. <laughs> fuse, yes. And let's take care of this. So everybody's dead. <laughs> Uh, not yet, Deke. Not quite in business no, just it. yet. Because now we've got speakers to take care of. And, uh... It's getting late. So, actually, before I take care of that one, I'm just going to go to this one up here. If uh, Deke will actually just get up on there. Because most freakers are going to come out at night. And we want to be well into the camp to deal with these speakers before they uh, start roaming around out there. And once I take care of the speakers here and get the Nero site up and running, we'll do a little bit of scavenging. Now, in taking care of this Nero site and the ambush camp, basically in one fell swoop, because it's actually it's actually two different things. It's a Nero camp and it's an ambush site. Oh, I guess, uh, yeah, that was the last one, but I, the explosion uh, destroyed that uh, speaker. Okay, good. One less thing to worry about. Finally. Jesus. I just want to be able to get the Jenny up and running. Now, this one is not going to start right away. It has to be... Here we go. ...repaired. Just a quick repair. Busted. Oh, yes. Nothing too crazy. And all the speakers are down. Now, did we... No, we didn't take... We didn't suffer any damage, so... We're good. So I can do one of two things right now. Uh, but honestly, the first thing I'm going to do is take care of the actual ambush camp and get their bunker open. And then we'll uh, change night to day, which we technically could do at the Nero trailer. 
But the ambush camp is a favored strategy to start off with if you have a choice because of the fog of war that encompasses the whole region until you either travel through it or more efficiently come over here and check out the map. So you can see that the fog of war gets lifted wherever we travel, but by taking out an ambush camp and getting to their map, it clears it out completely. And we've just picked up some wonderful experience points to get to the next skill point that we'll want to use. And more importantly, Wizard Island Trust and Cash. That'll be big. So now let's go change night today. Grab some shot eye. Since this is the first ambush camp we've taken care of, because in Iron Butte, even though we were at an ambush camp when we started this episode, uh, there was no way to get it because there was nobody to I'm take out. To go back at it. <clears throat> but this one, not only are we able to get it and clean it out, <laughs> I, I told you it was one shot. Now it is a little farther to travel to get that weapon. But there wasn't really that many obstacles in the way to get here. So it's really just a matter of choice if you want to take the extra time or not and avoid a whole river confrontation. Okay. So we're just going to head over. Where is everybody? Oh yeah, okay, right, they're over there. And uh, go get that MG45. Come on, D. Grab it. There we go. And right over here, that's our heavy. Need ammo. And you see, we picked up machine gun ammo. For the MG45. Because it's actually right there. Now, if you're strictly thinking about just getting the weapon. I would say this is the easier way to go because it's just like getting the US 556. It's out in the open. You just walk up to it and grab it. So after dealing with this ambush camp by getting the horde to do the work for you, all you got to do is come down, decide to deal with the horde or not, come down, grab the MG45 out in the open and you have it. And then you can go back to Iron Butte and wipe out the whole bunch of rippers with an MG45 in your arsenal. Something to think about if you're deciding which way is better. I don't think either way is wrong. It's just nice to go toe to toe with the rippers with an MG45 in your hand. One last thing to note about this location is that this is one of two small hordes that will respawn after a certain amount of days have gone by. Another one is really close to another ambush camp in the Belknap region. Yeah, I know, right? Nitwits. Anyway, so yeah, they'll just respawn over there, but just keep in mind that you won't have the crate to use to lure them out. Yes, finally. All right. Now let's see what they got there. Technically, you could come back after a few sleep cycles or after you've roamed around the region, find the horde here and farm them for free careers pretty much indefinitely. With a big caveat that you can't actually trade them in anywhere in this region until you've opened it up through the normal progression of the story. So keep that in mind. All right. We've maxed out stamina, and now we're going to start dealing with our health. Another narrow injector. Good. Good. Good, Deke, good. Won't be using focus. Ah, oh, really? Oh, that's so frustrating. Almost another skill point right there, but I guess we got to take care of a few more things then. All right. No worries. Besides, this is phase two 
of the journey of this video. Because, as I mentioned before, carrying the two weapons that we have are only available as long as we keep them on our person. What I want to do now is build up the trust at Wizard Island to do a very specific thing, which I will show you when I get there. So along the way, we still have another Nero checkpoint. It's not a checkpoint. It's a Nero research site. That's what the big X is on the map there. So we're going to grab that on our way to Wizard Island. And then I'll reveal phase two of the plan. Okay. So let's just, uh, where are you? Where's the gas can? There we go. Yeah, we're going to leave you behind there, pal. Get back to our bike. Because our bike is still way the hell up there. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right, mission accomplished. On to Wizard Island. I was very happy to have that nitrous get away from those wolves. At least there weren't runners. That would have been a more interesting experience. Oh. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Speaking of wolves, right? All right. So there's our destination. Let's just get a closer look. So that, that bridge, which is just on the other side of this uh, pass, is where we're going and where we're gonna meet up with the only merchant in the region. And why we want to take a little visit to the merchant is to show you what we're going after next in order to make Deke even more overpowered than he already is. So I just gotta watch those crows because their nests are around here somewhere. Now, there are newts at this location, but really, we can be in and out fairly quickly, because there's our, uh... Another Nero injector. Good. Yeah, keep giving us, uh, boosts there, Deke. Mm. Was about due for a flu shot. Field report 2069. Following up on a couple of reports that my supervisor kicked over to me from the SAT surveillance team, militia patrols have been spotted on eight different occasions at this location. Which wouldn't be remarkable, except they haven't burned it to the ground. So, anyway, that got the attention of my supervisor. Turns out he was right to flag this. Designated Site 307, the 1950s-era vacation house, has become a nest for a group of infected adolescents. Approximately 8 to 12 individuals, depending on migration patterns. Results from blood tests run on two males, approximately 13 and 11 years of age. Show antibodies and antiviral proteins that, frankly, we can't identify. The lab's going to get back to the conclusion. Someone in the militia is running experiments on these little guys. Who would be doing that? <laughs> Why? All right. We're almost here.
guy's gonna jump out of the way? Come on. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Get your calisthenics in early in the morning. Now, since we're here so early, I'm going to see if Sarah's around. We'll just uh, check out our bike and go to the mechanic. Now, as I mentioned, when you hit um, R3, which is the uh, right toggle, you can see on the lower right the icons for the services that are available to you. And you would, despite, no matter how far they are away from you, you'll see them all. Except for the fact that we only saw the mechanic. But actually, we now have a weapons merchant we can go to. Corporal. New guy? Name's Caleb. Caleb Tomlinson. Beacon St. John. Yeah, I, I just rode in. Oh, cool, man. Hey, listen, uh, Corporal. Later. Later. Because this guy is the guy I want to see. Uh, Corporal. Now... Obviously, the objective here is to get Deke OP as possible. And we do have two very powerful weapons in our arsenal right now that we were able to pick up on our journey over here just by grabbing them in the open world. That's not a long-term solution, though, seeing as weapons that you acquire from the open world aren't available to even be stored in the locker. That's a problem, hence phase two. What we've got here is a weapon merchant available in the south that we can actually purchase weapons from. And just by looking at the PPSH-41 in comparison to the US-556, it's very comparable. Same magazine size and even a little bit more damage. Because again... Looking at our locker, we don't have a primary that we can store. Come on, pal, move along. I got shit to do. <laughs> D, D, just cool your jets. Okay, so back to the explanation is why we're on phase two of getting trust at Wizard Island is to pick up a primary weapon, the PPSH-41, whose stats are really comparable to the US 556 that we're carrying. But not only that, as we take a look over to the RPD versus the MG45, it too is a slightly better weapon. Despite the fact that we have no missions we can go on, we've still got ambush camps, infestation zones, and Nero checkpoints, and they will all contribute to getting trust at Wizard Island. Hey, don't be that way. Now I'm just gonna just quickly show you that here at the camp, no sleep, no sleep for Deke. So we gotta make sure we get those ambush camps and Nero checkpoints open in order to advance our sleep cycle. Now, since I'm here, I'm gonna check out if uh, Sarah's running around somewhere. Oops. <laughs> uh, running into, I love running into doors, but that didn't work out very well. Oh well, Sarah's not there. Moving on to her next location that she normally resides at in the game, which is at her bunk, just on the other side of that guard tower. I love busting down the doors. Nope. Could she be inside the cave? I'm gonna find out. But of course it's way too early. Like they wouldn't set her up in here. Nope. Not in the cave. Let's go talk to the colonel. He's got to know, right? Mm. 
Where is he? Hold up. Oh yeah, he's down there. All right, Colonel, give up the ghost. Tell me where Sarah is. I know you got her. Unfortunately, I can't shoot at him. <laughs> you must be wondering, what the hell is this guy? Who is this guy? Anyway. Now I'm just gonna check in to see what time of day we're at. I think we're okay. This should be, a, yeah, it's only 12.30. Not too bad at all. All right, plenty of time to hit our next target, which will be another Nero checkpoint. And once we've cleared that, we're gonna take out an infestation zone. Now I can't point it out on the map here, so we'll just have to follow along. Follow my route as I leave Wizard Island. So it's gonna be that away. So while we've got time, we'll take care of the Nero checkpoint and the infestation zone and get ourselves that much closer. to level one at Wizard Island so that we can pick up those weapons that we can actually keep. Because that will come in handy to get yeah, those weapons. Yeah, not here. On the other side of the mountain. Now there's another ambush camp which we're gonna there's another ambush camp over there we're going to take out, but first things first, I want to take care of that infestation zone over there and get that Nero checkpoint open. Another infestation zone. Yeah, we're not worried about that, right? Yes, this second. Come back later, burn out these nests. gas up. So we'll just gas up the bike, make sure it's in uh, ready go condition. No, Deke, I did not want you to jump. I just want you to, yeah, <laughs> drop it. And let's take care of these speakers. Love having all that stamina. Now I can run around. And I think one more over there. Come on, D, get up there. Time's a wasting. And there's nothing that we gotta worry about as far as speakers on these things. Don't think so, don't think so. All right. I guess we're gonna find out if I missed any. Oh, here we go. That's 
that's it. Oh, yes. And nothing on the radar to speak of, so we're good to go. All right. There really better be something in here with all this trouble. Of course there is, Deke. There's always something good. Just what the doctor ordered. You just keep on juicing, my friend. Well, that went too fast, but... An apple a day. <laughs> That's a little bit more than an apple a day, but sure. Ah, yes, more machine gun. Okay. We're in really good shape. It's only two o'clock. Craft another Molotov. We only need the three. But we definitely have enough to craft more if we need it. Okay. I always think it's a good idea to get the Nero checkpoints open. Just as a place you can retreat to. In case uh, things get a little heated and you need to escape, but don't necessarily want to just ride crazily out into the open where there really isn't that many places to take refuge at. Yeah, that's right. I gotta burn out the rest of these nests. Oh, don't worry. We're gonna burn them out. Just uh, setting up the bike for a quick getaway. Sounds like they're hungry. Oh, what are you doing? Whoa! Where'd you come from? Well... Yeah. Nope, nope, nope. Not a health cocktail, my friend. Not a health cocktail. Nope, nope, nope. Not a health cocktail. <laughs> Damn, this thing's sensitive. <laughs> All right. Renegade camp. Sons of bitches, you think you can ambush me and get away with it? They say best laid plans all right enough of that okay relax let's get ready let's get ready for some action now we're gonna save that one when we get over there Okay, there's number one. Yeah. Oh, I smell a nest. Got to be right here. Got to be. Close. I can smell it. Number two. Come on, folks. Y'all chasing me? That's okay. Let's just... Oh, we're getting close. We're getting close. Should be clear now. Damn freaker nest. Should be safer to move through here now. Yep, it will be. And just in the nick of time, we've got 
the clock and the sun going down. Of course, where the hell's my bike? Oh yeah, my bike's over there. Uh -huh. Might as well just go get it and bring it back to the Nero checkpoint. Get away from those freakers and set myself up to have a nice little nap and be ready to take on that little ambush camp just oh here we go here we go sure why not <sighs> oh. all right well you're not here to see any tips and tricks on my aiming ability right that's not why you're here so don't worry about that i'm not going to show you any of that <laughs> Yeah, for the for the gun notes and the aiming, there's there's far better people than me. That's all right. I'm glad you were around and stuck around and watched all the way to the end. I appreciate it. So when we come back in the next episode, we're going after the Cascades Rail Lines Ambush Camp. And we're going to just keep building our trust at Wizard Island so that we can finally turn these weapons that we're just carrying off our backs for something we can actually buy and use going forward in days gone. Thanks all. Be good to yourselves and those you meet out there. Catch you next time.